Theodicy by Freiherr von Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. Excerpt from Preliminary Dissertation on the Conformity of Faith with Reason, published in 1710, section 6 through 10. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. 6. The question of the conformity of faith with reason has always been a great problem. In the primitive church, the ableist Christian authors adapted themselves to the idea of the Platonists, which were the most acceptable to them, and were at the time most generally in favor. Little by little, Aristotle took the place of Plato, when the taste for systems began to prevail and when theology itself became more systematic owing to the decisions of the general councils which provided precise and formative formularies st augustine boethius and cassiodorus in the west and st john of damascus in the east contributed most towards reducing theology to scientific form not to mention bede alcuin st anselm and other theologians versed in philosophy finally came the schoolmen the leisure of the cloisters giving full scope for speculation which was assisted by aristotle's philosophy translated from the arabic there was formed at last a compound of theology and philosophy wherein most of the questions arose from the trouble that was taken to reconcile faith with reason but this had not met with the full success hoped for because theology had been much corrupted by the unhappiness of the times by ignorance and obstinacy moreover philosophy in addition to its own faults which were very great found itself burdened with those of theology which in its turn was suffering from association with a philosophy that was very obscure and very imperfect one must confess notwithstanding with the incomparable grotius that there is sometimes gold hidden under the rubbish of the monk's barbarous latin i have therefore oft-times wished that a man of talent whose office had necessitated his learning of language of the schoolmen had chosen to extract thence whatever is of worth in that another Pateau or Thomasius had done in respect of the schoolmen what these two learned men have done in respect of the fathers. It would be a very curious work and very important for ecclesiastical history. It would continue the history of dogmas up to the time of the revival of letters, owing to which the aspects of things have changed, and even beyond that point. For sundry dogmas, such as those of physical determination of mediate knowledge philosophical sin objective precisions and many other dogmas in speculative theology and even in the practical theology of cases of conscience came into currency even after the council of trent seven a little before these changes and before the great schism in the west that still endures there was in Italy a sect of philosophers which disputed this conformity of faith with reason which I maintain. They were dubbed Avorius, because they were adherents of a famous Arab author who was called the commentator by preeminence, and who appeared to be the one of all his race that penetrated furthest into Aristotle's meaning this commentator extending what greek expositors had already taught maintained that according to aristotle and even according to reason and at that time the two were considered almost identical there was no case for the immortality of the soul here is his reasoning the human kind is eternal according to aristotle therefore if individual souls die not one must resort to the metempsychosis rejected by the philosopher or if there were always new souls one must admit the infinity of the souls existing from all eternity but actual infinity is impossible according to the doctrine of the same aristotle therefore it is a necessary conclusion that the souls that is the forms of organic bodies must perish with the bodies or at least this must happen to the passive understanding that belongs to each one individually 
thus there will only remain the active understanding common to all men which according to aristotle comes from outside and which must work wheresoever the organs are suitably disposed even as the wind produces a kind of music when it is blown into properly adjusted organ pipes eight nothing could have been weaker than this would be proof it is not true that aristotle refuted metempsychosis or that he proved the eternity of the human kind and after all it is quite untrue that an actual infinity is impossible yet this proof passed as irresistible among aristotelians and induced in them the belief that there was a certain sublunary intelligence and that our active intelligence was produced by participation in it but others who adhered less to aristotle went so far as to advocate a universal soul forming the ocean of all individual souls and believed this universal soul alone capable of subsisting whilst individual souls are born and die according to this opinion the souls of animals are born by being separated like drops from their oceans when they find a body which they can animate and they die by being reunited to the ocean of souls when the body is destroyed as streams are lost in the sea many even went so far as to believe that god is that universal soul although others thought that this soul was subordinate and created this bad doctrine is very ancient and apt to dazzle the common herd it is expressed in these beautiful lines of virgil aeneid book six verse seven twenty four written in latin and again elsewhere virgil gorgics book four verse two twenty one again written in latin nine plato's soul of the world has been taken in this sense by some but there is more indication that the stoics succumb to that universal soul which swallows all the rest those of this opinion might be called monophysites since according to them there is in reality only one soul that subsists m bernier observes that this is an opinion almost universally accepted amongst scholars in persia and in the states of the grand mogul it appears even that it has gained a footing with the cabalists and with the mystics a certain german of swabian birth converted to judaism some years ago who taught under the name of moses germanus having adopted the dogmas of spinoza believed that spinoza revived the ancient kabbalah of the hebrews and a learned man who confuted this proselyte jew appears to be of the same opinion it is known that spinoza recognizes only substance in the world whereof individual souls are but transient modifications valentin Vigel, pastor at Sop paul in saxony a man of wit even of excessive wit although people would have it that he was a visionary was perhaps to some extent of that opinion as was also a man known as johann angelus Silesius, author of certain quite pleasing little devotional verses in german in the form of epigrams which have just been reprinted in general the mystic's doctrine of deification was liable to such a sinister interpretation gerson has already written opposing roycebrook a mystical writer whose intention was evidently good and whose expressions were excusable but it would be better to write in a manner which has no need of excuses although i confess that oft-times expressions which are extravagant and as it were poetical have greater force to move and to persuade than correct forms of statement ten the annihilation of all that belongs to us in our own right carried to great lengths by the quietists might equally well be veiled irreligion in certain minds as is related for example concerning the quietism of fo originator of a great chinese sect after having preached his religion for forty years when he felt death was approaching he declared to his disciples that he had hidden the truth from them under the veil of metaphors 
and that all reduced itself to nothingness which he said was the first source of all things that was still worse so it would seem than the opinion of the avorios both of these doctrines are indefensible and even extravagant nevertheless some moderns have made no difficulty about adopting this one and universal soul that engulfs the rest it has met with only too much applause amongst the so-called free thinkers and m de presiac a soldier and man of wit who dabbled in philosophy at one time aired it publicly in his discourses the system of pre-established harmony is the one best qualified to cure this evil for it shows that there are of necessity substances which are simple and without extension scattered throughout all nature that these substances must subsist independently of every other except god and that they are never wholly separated from organic body those who believe that souls capable of feeling but incapable of reason are mortal or who maintain that none but reasoning souls can have feeling offer a handle to the monocytes for it will ever be difficult to persuade men that beasts feel nothing and once the admission has been made that that which is capable of feeling can die it is difficult to found upon reason a proof of the immortality of our own souls end of theodicy published in seventeen ten by ferrer von gottfried wilhelm leibniz excerpt from preliminary dissertation on the conformity of faith with reason section six through ten